Hey guys, this is Dead from Mission Impossible. Welcome back to episode 14 of my Atari 8-bit assembly language tutorial series. Uh, this week is gonna be a little different. We gotta figure out what the game is gonna be about and look at some graphics. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's check it out. Notice we have a new title here. It's The Legend of the Five Dragons. Uh, I figured that'd probably be a good title, especially since uh, the theme that we're gonna be going through here. You know, have a description, an adventure, you're an adventurer, finds an artifact, the dragon amulet. The amulet used to contain five different dragon gems, but the gems have since been removed. The player's goal is to search for the five lost dragon gems buried deep in five dungeons scattered throughout the world. As the player collects each gem, it is added to the amulet. Each dungeon has a certain level of amulet required from zero to four gems. After a gem is retrieved, it is added to the dragon amulet. When the amulet is complete with all five gems, the player is able to take on a final challenge. Um, so I, this is gonna be in the repo. Uh, the you know, link is in the description below, but you can see you know, one of the major things that, that we did with the game is we wanted to focus on the fact that we could have five colors <laughs> on the screen at once. And uh, so we just kind of designed around that. And the idea is at the bottom of each of these dungeons, there's gonna be a different color dragon, which will drop a different color gem. We went into how the game is gonna be uh, played. And uh, you know, we, we tried to keep it simple. Uh, the, the idea here is that we didn't want to necessarily have things like an inventory or a lot of things that uh, normal RPGs do. We wanted to try to keep the scope limited. Um, so let's see, we have, uh, the, there's four different skills, melee, defense, range, and fortitude. Uh, melee is gonna be how hard you hit. Defense is how easy it is for them to hit you. Uh, range is how well you are, how good are you with a bow? And fortitude uh, is basically how healthy you are. Your hit points are based on fortitude and you're gonna have a, a hit point bar as well as an XP bar. And when you fill up the XP bar, then you're able to gain a level and the player can choose which skill they wanna put that level in. So if you wanted to have all melee or all defense or whatever you wanted to do, you could suit your place out. Um, let's see, feel free to read this. Uh, I'm not gonna read it out loud here, but basically the idea is that each of the, the dungeons is gonna have four floors. And the idea is that they could get bigger and bigger and until when you get to the bottom floor, it's gonna be huge. Uh, and then eventually find a colored dragon to kill. Um, one of the other things that we talked about is the fact that when you enter the dungeon, that is when the monsters are going to be spawned. And so that you could actually redo the dungeons over and over again. And uh, you, you might want to, to get higher levels, etc. The idea is that there won't be a dragon to kill if you've already killed the one in that dungeon, uh, but there will be a treasure room. Uh, treasure rooms is basically a treasure chest with a bunch of monsters in it. Um, let's see. We designed a little bit of the combat system and I you know, wanted to kind of come up with something pretty simple. It's really gonna have to be play tested. Uh, basically something like take the attacker's melee or range value and subtract the defender's uh, defense value and then do some rolls and have those numbers affect the rolls. Um, let's see. Oh. So one of the things that we talked about was the fact that we'd like to have animation. And so the character sets are how we're going to do animation. It's really easy to switch between character sets. Um, it's actually much, much faster to do that than doing any copying or anything like that. So the idea will be that we'll have one character set, uh, it, it will have a character set being displayed at once and then after like 500 milliseconds or a second or whatever, uh, then it'll change to the other character set and vice versa. It'll go back and forth. So we could have some very simple animation. One other thing that we're gonna be doing is changing the layout of the screen. It's going to be half 
play field, and then half status. So we'll have all the icons and numbers associated with each of the skills, the hit point bar, the XP bar, etc., etc. Also, we're gonna have an indicator showing uh, the player which gems they have uh, in the amulet. So that's always gonna be on the screen. So therefore, those characters that we're, we're using there also have to be in the character set. So what it's come down to is four character sets, two dungeon and two outdoor. Uh, character sets. So Ray and I sat down and we had our hand at pixel art and we actually created some new art. So I'm going to zoom in here and forgive us it's programmer art, but there's some stuff I think that turned out pretty good. Um, so we are using the full character set here. Um, notice that there's a gap here and I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, but the uh, we are using all 128 characters, um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff is status. Also, notice that we've changed the colors a little bit. Instead of a green, we're going to go with the blue. Um, there's just some technical reasons why we just decided to change to blue instead of green. The main thing is that we wanted to have water. Blue water looks a whole lot better than green water. Uh, so. Um, so yeah, so here's some of the gems that are gonna be in the amulet. You know, you can kind of take a look here and you can probably figure out what most of these, these things are, but they're little parts that are gonna go together to be able to make, you know, the scene. Uh, so this is the dungeon one. Here's the outdoor one. I haven't done the, uh, the B side yet, which will be the animation, uh, but notice how it's very, very similar but we have letters in here where it's blank. And the reason why is because in the outdoor, we're not gonna have monsters. So this, the area where the, the letters are is going to be where the monsters are gonna go in the dungeon. Um, there's some, some stuff in here and I can talk about it later when we get to the UI, which I'm hoping will be next episode. But we have a lot of stuff in here that's just set up for the UI. Um, let's see. So now we get to the monsters. So it's really difficult to make art with only five colors. <laughs> you think that the resolution is the problem, but no, really it's the number of colors. So I might call out a few of these. Yeah, we have a rat, we have a zombie, uh, skeletons that are red, uh, because it's really hard to do white on white. Uh, the background, uh, the floor is going to be white. So that's why all the backgrounds for these are, is white. Um, but some of the ones we're more proud of are things like the Mimic uh, and the Dragons. I think the Dragons turned out pretty good. Notice that the Dragons are uh, two by two tiles. So we'll actually have uh, big dragons in our dungeon. So looking forward to that. So now that we have the art the way we want it, uh, I needed to do an update to the tile maker. Um, there's, you know, because there's more than one graphic, I, I added some things to be able to specify the image file on the command line. Um, I fixed some of the color issues. For the longest time, we had green doors. Um, so no more green doors. Now we have brownish, reddish doors. Um, so this is in the uh, repo, of course. And I've gone through and actually created the assembly language uh, files from these. So, uh, so we have you know, three files here. And so let me go back and let me show you the changes that we had to make to the code. So I've already done this, uh, but I think you can follow, follow along okay here. Added in the two character sets here, the dungeon and the outdoor character sets, as well as the art for the monsters. We'll use that later uh, when we start spawning monsters, for, but for now we really just care about these two character sets. I moved the screen to uh, 8,000 instead of 6,000. And let's see. I also moved the colors from the color, from the setup color procedure, and just so that you can update these at you know, the top. Um, I changed, obviously, from green, I changed it to blue. I also tweaked the colors a little bit. 
Um, also, we needed to change the character set, you know, what it's gonna be loaded in uh, by default. Um, and let's see, what else? I think the only other change really is uh, the loading in these the other files as opposed to the the graphics uh, ASM file. Uh, let's take a look at what the uh, setup colors now looks like. Um, so really, these are the same things. It's just changing like the green to the blue. Um, we did I did tweak these a little bit. Gold, you know, we now have a gold color. Um, the biggest problem you know that we face with this is trying to make things look good with a very limited number of colors. And so we unfortunately had to go away from multiple uh, gray slash white colors and had to just go to white. So we have black, white, blue, red, and gold. That's it. Um, and it can be challenging, but uh, let's actually take a look at what we've got. Okay, and you might notice that I'm using a different window as opposed to PowerShell within uh, Visual Studio Code because PowerShell is driving me crazy. <laughs> uh, having a proper um, you know, uh, uh, history buffer is kind of a big deal. So I'm just gonna, gonna assemble it and then let's see, here, uh, let's take a look. Okay, notice, uh, as we said, uh, we have a white background. And uh, here we got the uh, up ladder instead of stairs. Um, trying to make stairs look right with so few uh, pixels is difficult. I think the, the, the ladder up looks good. We have a fountain. Uh, it's probably, you can probably go through it still, but you know, that's okay. We can tweak that easily. Uh, fountain is too wide. Uh, here's the new walls. And now we have a doorway as opposed to a door. Um, so this is the same that map that we had last time. I just tweaked it for the new values. And then we have the stairs down or ladder down. <laughs> um, so I think this looks a lot better as far as the floor goes, as far as the busyness. But one of the things is the fact that, that it's very tiled. You can definitely see where all the tiles are. And so if we look at the art, we actually planned for making it so that we have different uh, variations of the walls and the floors. So the idea is when the uh, map generator will, will generate the maps, it will pick from each one of these tiles. The, uh, from the, the wall, there's three different wall tiles. From the floor, there's three wall, or there's three floor tiles, but the interesting thing about this is that it'll be able to mix and match these. So, uh, you know, it's got three tiles here, but this is a matter of six uh, characters. So it's gonna pick uh, one from the left and one from, you know, it, it picks a left one from any six, any one of the six, and it'll pick a right one from any of the six. So the floor should be very, uh, varied, very, very, should be really varied. Um, so, uh, you know, so that'll be a lot better looking. You know, we, we only have the white floor, but I think that this overall is going to be, uh, better. So that's actually it. Uh, for today. Short episode this week, but we have a lot more stuff coming up. Next episode is going to be all about the UI, and we're going to be able to put all of these cool icons uh, to use. And it's, it's really going to start looking like a game then. Uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about it. As we were doing the art, I was going, man, I really want to see this in game. And uh, so, yeah. So that's all we have today. I appreciate you being here and uh, we are on a better schedule for putting these out. So look for the next episode within a week or two and we should have one out. Until next time, see you in the next adventure. Take care. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell.
I post new videos all the time and I wouldn't want you to miss any. If you'd like to see more of this series, be sure to click up here. And if you'd like to see something else, be sure to click up here.